Hello, I'm Runia, aka Media Adaptation, and welcome back to a moderation while meeting for a game. And it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for more web comics. And today we've been asked to take a look at the series Twin Dragons by Robin. Robin what? I don't know. Robin is the only name that's given. The Demon Art is listed as the Neko Boy. Oh, and would you look at that? On their website, it actually has the author's full name. Maybe next time you could try looking before speaking. Well, again, that's only if you go to their website, as most people will probably just know it from Tepest and Webtoons. But back on topic. It started in 2015, and it deals with a world similar to our own. Only, for some unknown reason, children started being born with animalistic traits. So, think My Hero Academia, but this is still in the early stages, as it's currently only affecting about 10% of the population. And the changes could be something simple like eye color or hair, to them being full-blown anthropomorphic. And I also can't recall anyone above the age of a teenager with it. So our story focuses on a pair of twins with the latter side of this change. Kai, the strong-headed brother, and Kaya, the excitable sister. They live in a small town where they're the only ones like them, so they daily have to deal with the older generations mistrusting them as well as others claiming them to be the spawn of Satan. Which gets old pretty fast. But they try their best not to let it get to them, as their dad works as a chef, and their family has finally saved up enough money to try their luck at their own restaurant. So the family finally moves to a larger city, from a place where maybe 200 people, to one with countless thousands. Oh, and while they're moving, we also learn that the twins got a bit of a strength boost, thanks to their nature, as their muscles could output the strength of someone a few years older, as they're about 14, so think about 60. It's not overpowered, but it does catch a few people off guard. Also, on a side note, they are not cold-blooded. As the two get arguing during the trip, and our dad jokes that if they were, he could just turn on the AC to knock them out. Also, before they left, they decided to play a little prank on the town, and make a crop circle with some rope and 2x4s. Once they get to the new place, they befriend one of their neighbors, Benji. Wow, his parents really must have hated him, or something to call a dog hybrid Benji. That's a little on the nose, because his parents abandoned him at an orphanage, because they didn't want to deal with a hybrid child. So he got adopted by a gay couple, and he's got a pretty good outlook on life, as his new family chose to make him a part of their life. Also, while many of the characters in this comic dye their hair, Benji is actually part albino, which it only affects his normal hair and not his fur. And also he can eat chocolate, in case you were wondering. But aside from that, he's a pretty average gamer kid, and they become fast friends. Chapter 3 has them starting class, as Kaya tries to make a new friend, named Cleo, a snake hybrid. But her other friends are less than enthusiastic about it, and it turns out that they've just been using her for her money. She tries to question her about it later, but she thinks she's just trying to exploit her as well. So she just shoves money at her and starts to walk off. But again, she's a dragon, so she just torches it. Of which she then questions the intellect of someone who just lit a hundred dollar bill on fire. But the gesture did mean a lot to her. Basically, she met the other kids when she started school, and was often alone. And when she brought candy, other people pretended to like her. But it quickly became clear that that's all they cared about. Well, almost all of them, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So, while she knew it was an unhealthy relationship, what was she to do, as her only other option was to be alone again? So, the two finally become friends, and the next day, the other group isn't too happy about it. And Cleo kind of clamps up, but snaps out of it whenever they attack her new friend. But, as said before, strength boost. Which then we immediately hard cut to her trying to explain this to the principal, of why they were in a fight. And for the most part, they were in the right. But she did set one of their hair on fire. 
So yeah, a month of detention for the both of them. Chapter 4 involves Kai wanting to try out for the basketball club. And they meet their captain, Rex, a wolf hybrid, who turns them down based on his height. Which really gets under his skin, given the place that they grew up, that everyone was judging him based on his appearance. So he then challenges them to a one-on-one. -on -one. If he wins, he gets to join the team. If not, he's their water boy for a month. But in his brass nature, he forgot one little detail. He's never played basketball before. Which his sister is more than happy to remind him how stupid that is. So Benji tries his best to help him out with the basics, but it's clear he's going to need much more than that. Another running theme is that Cleo feels like she owes her for all that she's done. But she doesn't want to accept anything from her based on what her past friends did to her. So she has to get creative a few times. And calls in a favor to rent out a place for them to practice, as well as someone to help him train. Of which he really needs. Again, given his nature, he does have higher jumping power, but that doesn't cover everything, as he lacks stamina and endurance, which Rex has in spades. So given their window of only a week to train, they come up with a strategy that should give him the best chance of success. Her sister tries to prank him by putting a pepper in his water bottle, but forgot to try and dice it up first. But chapter 5 is their match, and their plan is to use his advantages against him. To try and get him off his game, throwing him off his rhythm, and having him play catch up. But sadly it has the opposite effect, as he actually enjoys the challenge, which allows him to refocus his effort and just schools him. But after it's over, he lets him join anyway. Turns out that was Rex's plan for the start, as he needed to see what kind of person he was, as he would only accept people who would take this seriously and give it their all. Chapter 6 involves a game of D&D, which is always an interesting read and they even get Rex to join in. But this story is something that's best explored for yourself, so let's move on to the next one. Chapter 7 involves a trip to the museum. And again, them being from a small town, it's kind of a big deal for them. We also get to meet one of Rex's other friends called Nate, but he likes to be called McThunderpants. Which is a bit weird, but I'll give him a pass on that, which we'll get into in a minute. It's unclear how they know each other, as I'm not sure if he's from the club. He is more of a tactician, who always wants to help Rex make sure that he doesn't fall behind in the rest of his schoolwork. We get a bunch of goofing off until we get back to the storyline, as Cleo's ex-friends show back up. Things start to turn sour, but Rex and Nate show back up, and gets the other group to back off. Also, another perk about being a dragon is heat resistance, as she lost her hot drink in the fight and wasn't burned. But some people just don't know when to quit, as they still try to cause trouble. Well. Not all of them, as their youngest, Liz, tries to talk some sense into them. But she picks up a stone ball and tries to throw it at them. But Nate McThunderpants snags it from her at the last minute. So I guess he is part of the club. And easily dodges the two while looking up their personal records. But that's not the only reason I give him a pass on his name. As he was simply buying time as the security guards catch up. But as they're being taken away, he makes a point to single out Liz as she didn't do anything wrong. She just wanted to have her friend back. Again, she was the youngest of the group. She didn't question when Leo bought them stuff. She never asked for anything more than the occasional treat, and Cleo never said anything to her about it. When she asked the others, they just said that that's something that she wanted to do. Yes, it was strange, but they were young and Cleo was happy. Well, at least as far as she could tell. Nate actually spends the rest of the chapter helping her out. And... That's why I'm going to give him a pass on that stupid name of his. Oh, and something else that you might have guessed is all the background characters, as it started off as a Patreon reward, and one of the first ones was a zebra girl named Zuri. She pops up a lot from time to time, and has kind of become this Where's Waldo, so it's always nice to try and find her. And in the last page of this chapter, she meets Liz and hopefully helps her start over. She is a character I would like to see get worked back into the story. And finally, we're up to our current arc, as Chapter 8 involves a mandatory checkup, which is neat from a story perspective, as we learn a bunch of little details about how the world has changed with hybrids coming along. And also that mythical versions are highly uncommon, as most accounts are just people trying to pass off lesser versions of it. And we also get a bit of learning how their fire breath works, as it seems to be a chemical that they produce 
which ignites when it comes into contact with air. But that's pretty much it for the story up till this point. It's a very relaxing comic, as it's more of a lighthearted story than what we're used to. But that's kind of its charm. Not every story has to be dark and twisted. Sometimes, just the day-to-day -day lives of kids is all you need for a good narrative. And that about does it for this video. If you have any other ideas like seeing me do a video, then please post it down in the comments below, and we'll add it to our next video request week. It's now time for the part of the show, where we ask you to help us appease the YouTube algorithm by dropping a like, share, or comment. It helps out much more than you'd think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then it's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to support this channel, then please visit our Patreon. Link will be down in the description below. Even if you can't give a lot, every little bit helps. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Anyway, I'm Runya. And I'm Ada. Remind you to take life in moderation. Weep not for children, for life is this way. Murdering beauty and passion. Hush now, dear children, it must be this way. To weary of life and deceptions. Rest now, my children.